Oh, shalom, Rastafari. Now, this is this day is one of the days of the um, eclipse. We touched on that 10 10 2011. But what we want to speak on here, and this has been on our hearts and minds, concerning these false allegations of our Father, of His Majesty, His Imperial Majesty, the Maui Haile Selassie, being a so called uh, Freemason. You know, many still allege falsely that His Majesty was some sort of a Freemason, and to this day they cannot tell us whether it's uh, what Scottish right he's not Scottish he's Ethiopian from the root and the foundation was it a York right where the pictures of his majesty in the apron his majesty throughout all the photos of the king of kings we do not see him doing any of these so-called pseudo European Freemasonic signs you know like the heartburn one where person has their hand in their vest or something or like the Pat Robinson did this claw position, and a lot of the other, neither the Baphomet, the the Il Cornudo, you don't see any of that. In fact, what they do say is that His Majesty's um, Trinity, when he puts his hand in the in the in the Trinity, what they call the Trinity or Selassie in the in the downward triangle. They say, well, that's a Freemasonic thing because you see a lot of folks nowadays doing it. Well, the Satanistic and the so-called Freemasonics, they're always about stealing from God and trying to flip the script on God. And that's an example of exactly what's going on. Okay, here's the proof. When you see His Majesty do the Trinity hand symbol, then go back and look for all the Masons doing this prior to his Imperial Majesty, so-called Freemasons or whoever they may be or whoever they claim to be. And one thing you would notice, you would not find any pictures. So far, we haven't found even one picture of anyone doing his Imperial Majesty's unique trinity um, hand sign or the signal, which is really, it's called practicus. The guy, Tex Mars, he has a page in his book, um, Codex, I think, Magica, where he talks about this particular symbol is, is the hand of practice, so forth and so on. Yet, you do not see any of these so-called pseudo-Freemasons pose with that prior to Haile Selassie. But now, after Haile Selassie, you see, you know, a lot of these pseudo so forth and so on doing that. And then you have the next group that do the Jay-Z, the Jay-Z um, hand sign and signal, which is the upward so-called sign. A brother did a video actually on that. I think it's one of the expose um, or truth, uh, truth theater, truth teller, something like that. He, he did a video where he makes a connection with that in the Ark of the Covenant, which is pretty interesting. Of course, he doesn't include his imperial majesty because he's, he's not at that level of consciousness, I guess, at this present time, or at least at that time. But let's touch a little bit more on, this is going to be a continuation to the other uh, video that we had um, previously put forward concerning um, is... Haile Selassie, a Freemason. We would like to call this particular video um, Freemasons Reject or Refused the Stone, colon, Haile Selassie the First. In other words, Haile Selassie, his imperial majesty, the conquering line of the tribe of Yehuda, of Judah, Haile Selassie the first, elect of God, king of kings of Ethiopia, or Bamarinya, Moa Anbesa, Ze'ima Negeda Yehuda, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, Siyuma Egezi Aviher, Negusa Negest, Ze Echopia. That is official. That is the official um, protocol of his imperial majesty, or, or what they call the titulary, the, the name, the official seal of the King of Kings of Ethiopia. Now, what we're going to do is go to the scriptures. Let's go to this particular scripture here. 
Now this particular scripture right here, this is the IOTA or the IOTA software, the Amharic Bible software, which has the Metaf Caduce of Hala Selassie one side, the Amharic side over here, and this is the King James on this side right here. This is Psalm 118. In Psalm 118, which is a very, very important and a very interesting psalm, we find this particular verse here at verse 22. Verse 22. So let's get our Bibles, our pen and our paper and our sacred scripture, and let's bring a, a willing and a receptive mind to the half of the story which hasn't been told before. And let us begin. Bamarinya Askermo, firstly, in them heart, it says, Gin binyoch ye nakuta dingai arasu ye ma'izen aras hone. Benglezenya, it says, The stone which the builders refuse is become the headstone of the corner. Now, some say this is the cornerstone. In our, one of our previous videos, we tried to um, express the truth that the cornerstone is not the capstone. Many people be lie Eve and believe that the cornerstone is not the capstone. In the words, if you look on the back of the great seal of the United States in this world order, you see there's a capstone in an illuminated sort so of an eye at the top. I think it's a left eye at the top of this pyramid. Um, which is like some of the pyramids found not in Egypt, but the Sudanese pyramids. They say that's the capstone right there, but the cornerstone is the first stone. That's why it's the Yemaizen Ras, the Ras. This word right here is Ras, or in the Hebrew, for the Hebrew of head, it is Rosh, Rosh, or Ritis. Ritis, more correctly, Ritis from the Gutis. But here it's speaking of the Ginbenyoch, the Ginbenyoch, the Ginbenyoch. These are the masons. These are the stone masons right here. It's using a metaphor. That the metaphor is saying that the Ginbenyoch, and in today's language, this is the Freemasons. Now, let's first of all distinguish something. Mason and Freemason, because many people are confused about this particular point of Mason, of Masonry, and so-called Freemasonry. Before there was Freemasonry, there was Masonry. In other words, there were those who were skillful in stone, who were builders, who had wisdom, some wisdom. We have also these sort of um, skillful ones like... Um, Bezaliel in the scriptures in the Bible who was skillful in all sort of cunning works, whether silver, gold, and, and wood, and no doubt other forms of metal and other forms of technology. So those are ones who had uh, certain skills, which in the old world was technology skills. But the Ginbenyoch, the Ginbenyoch are the stonemasons, the stone masons. If you know the story about masonry from any good and reputable sources, you would know that what we call Freemasonry is a European, um, modern, fairly modern, New World European tradition, Anglo and European institution. Now, if you want to talk about real so called um, masons or builders, we will have to go back to ancient ancient Kemet or ancient Gibbet, ancient Egypt, uh, Tameri or Taseti. We have to go back to ancient Egypt and ancient Ethiopia to find the real uh, works of craft, arts and craft known as um, Masonic structures or structures which have been built by great craftsmen or craftsmen who were possessed of great skill and technology who were able to do things which even today are considered to be wonders of the modern world. Let's just bring this picture up right here if we can. So we talked about the 
Trinity, the hand sign. It's this hand sign which has a lot of people believing that His Imperial Majesty is a so-called Freemason. Now, see, the word Freemason and free, in other words, free and Freemason doesn't really mean free. When they, when the Europeans, when they um, misappropriated the the teachings that was taught to them and use them for various nefarious purposes, not to really better man's life, but to bring man and humanity into bondage, especially since the A.D., the A.D. time period over the past, we can say overall 2,000 years, but in particular over the past 400 plus, plus years. The free meant that they were free of ma'at, do you know what ma'at is? Ma'at is, is truth, justice, and righteousness. And they were free of ma'at. Therefore, they can use this uh, technology as in the story of Prometheus. If you've heard of Prometheus, Prometheus stole fire from the gods. And in a similar way, the Europeans stole fire from the gods. They stole fire from the ancient peoples, the ancient Ethiopians, the ancient Kemetans, the ancient Egyptians. They stole this intelligence. Fire is a metaphor in the Ethiopic for intelligence. They stole this intelligence, intel, from the gods. And being free of ma'at, the law of ma'at, of truth, justice, and righteousness, they felt themselves free to utilize this technology for any purpose that they sought to utilize it for. And it just so happens that based on the fruits, we can see all the evil purposes that they have used this technology, all forms of technology. Every time you hear a new technology coming out, they always talk about, well, this is going to be with the better people's lives and everybody's going to, you know, uh, have, have food in their pot and nobody's going to have to suffer and die. And next thing you know, people can't afford this new technology, which probably was discovered on their own taxpayer dollars, but now they can't get these life-saving treatments it's, it's the greed. It's the greed of the present, the modern world, and of these particular end times. But let us continue with this particular teaching on, there's a couple of other uh, word picks that we would like to um, use and, 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 and utilize here. But um, let's just continue with the theme of this right now. We're just going through some of some of the art and facts that we have that might um, assist us in this. But um, the, word, the word is sufficient. The word is sufficient. So, there are many who be naive or believe that his imperial majesty um, was or is a Freemason. And what we're trying to distinguish is Freemason from original Mason. The original Masons were the original builders. Lalabella in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia, is just one real world demonstration that this uh, Masonic or building or technological skill is still with the original peoples, the original black peoples, the original Ethiopian peoples. This is one reason why many speculate and say that it's extraterrestrial and try to take the, the, the credit away from the black Ethiopians and the black people in Ethiopia. And if one would say, well, the Ethiopians and the Africans are suffering so many things. They don't even have food and they have war and all this, these sort of things. It should be obvious who is the cause or the exasperator of these circumstances by keeping the people in ignorance of themselves. They have also been made to be naive or believe something other than the truth 
of themselves and of many of us as their brothers and sisters and even mothers here in the West. We've been effectively divided and conquered. And behind that is these worldly builders who sought to build a new world order, even though the original world order was already established more than 13,000, 11 to 13,000 years ago in ancient Kemet and ancient Kush and ancient Ethiopia and down the stream, down the river um, in ancient uh, Egypt and from Egypt these knowledges spread throughout the world. And look at the other video that we're going to post. We should have already, hopefully by the time you see this, you would have seen that video concerning Egypt or Ethiopian Egypt, the origin of myth, mythology, philosophy, and um, all religions, the principles of all true religions. The only religion that we do not have credit for and cannot take credit for as Ethiopians and Egyptians is, is Satanism and atheism. This was always separated apart, and we can credit the Northerners, the Europeans, and we can see that we're living in a satanic system, which the Bible prophesizes to this very day. So that's the only so-called um, religion that is not credited as being a product. It was a byproduct. In other words, Satanism was a byproduct of the truth of God in Christ. Now, as far as the builders, let's get back to this. So we want to distinguish the two. Freemason is different than Mason. So, so when the Bible says that the stone which the builders refuse, we say that Haile Selassie I, he is that stone, that living stone which the builders and his truth is that truth, that half of the story that hasn't been told until now, until these last days. They lied about the King of Kings. If you look at the movie Network, there's a scene in the movie Network where they talk about um, this goddamn tube and how television has, been, has lied to the whole world, making them believe illusions. Let us understand when that movie was made and how they utilize that medium, TV and, and media and, and the propaganda, to make people believe, and even Ethiopians themselves, to believe lies against to also refuse this man, refuse this man and moreover his truth, which is the true good news or the true gospel of God and Christ. So the stone, which the builders who are masons, which they refuse, it says here, is become the what? He is a rasu ye ma izen ras hone. He is the head stone of the corner. The head stone or the head of the corner. Literally, bamarinya ye ma izen is a is a square. Ye ras is the head. He has become the head of the square the head of that ma is in. Now, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, would also speak these words. So we find these words as well in the New Testament. We find these words also echoed in the New Testament concerning Psalm 118 and verse 22. And let us use this search. This search means right here um, in one, uh, yeah, one, uh, 118.22. Now, just to prove our point, we went to the King James Version with the Strong's Concordance Numbers. As you see right here, Builders is the Hebrew 11.29. And 11.29 is Bana, Bona, Bona. Bana, Bona is a primitive root, and it means to build. What's the first thing that His Majesty began to do in Ethiopia and with Ethiopia? is to build and to till and to educate. Literally, 
and figuratively begin to build. It's at the root of a builder. So the, the builders, we say that, that the prophetic interpretation, this verse, is that the stone is Ethiopia, is Hylus Elisi, which the builders, or Christ, Christ in his kingly character, which the builders, who today are the Freemasons, refuse. But that stone that they refuse is become the Raz, the headstone of the corner. Now, here's something interesting right here about the word Bana. The word Bana also can mean to obtain children. In other words, to have children. The really ancient root of Bana, when talking about to build, was to also obtain children, to make to make in the sense of making children, to build children. So the ancient idea different than the modern lost in translation, uh, Western Gentile misunderstanding is, is the key, as well as to repair, to set up, to set something up, to set it up, to make it sure. And now we need to understand this in context with his imperial majesty. And there's a very good book out there, which we had a copy but one who we thought was a brethren um, had absconded with that from us, but may Yah forgive him. This book right here is Yechop Ia Tariq, and this particular book, perhaps you have seen it, um, perhaps you have not seen it. Um, as soon as we are able to obtain another copy of it, those who might have an opportunity to scan this and put this online, please do. This particular book is a very, very interesting book because it, it's basically a history of Ethiopian pictures. Yeah, And when you see the works that His Imperial Majesty did or inspired to have done within about 40 years, 40 to 50 or so years in Ethiopia, it is like if America became... America in 20 years, that would be amazing, right? If America became this modernized as it is today within 20 years, wouldn't that be just, just totally amazing, like a miracle and astounding feat? Wouldn't that show who is truly the real master mason or the master builder or who is the grand architect? Now, because we say that His Majesty is not a Freemason, this does not mean that we are saying His Majesty is not the Grand Architect. He is the Grand Architect. You understand? He is the Grand Architect, and he proved his greatness, and he proved exactly who he is by what he did. And most of all, it's not so much what he did, but it's the reaction to him. And this verse right here, Psalm 118, verse 22 is the, is the perfect example how the Freemasons, most of them Anglo-European, racist, slave-driving, slave-holding, practicing a, a counterfeit form of Christianity, a whitewashed, perverse, and perverted version. We're just looking at the fruits that they would reject and refuse his imperial majesty. Look at the world today. If his majesty was a Freemason, Right? If his majesty was down with their order, you know they would talk about him more. You know, when they talk about Hitler and they talk about Mussolini, they would talk about oh, this a lot. Say, yeah, he was down with, they would definitely, you know that. They always do that. But they have actually, they have actually, um, how can we say, have sought to erase his imperial majesty's presence out of world history. This is what's so, or to relegate him to a very small footnote that unfortunately the foolish among our so-called people, among black folks, think that because there's not more they find in their so-called history books concerning the king of kings that he played an insignificant role in history. He plays a great role in history, in our story, both at the end of this world system, which we are currently in the process of experiencing, and in the new world or the world to come. But His Imperial Majesty is not a free 
Masons. In other words, he's not a a um, an Anglo-European, York Rite, Scottish Rite, or any of those latter-day free Masons, because his imperial majesty is free, but he's not free of truth, justice, and right. He's not free of that, nor does he seek to be free of that. The so-called Freemasons are free of any sense of righteousness or any sense of obligation to that which is true or honor. Because if they had any honor, they would have bowed and admitted the King of Kings, and we would have been in a true new world order in which dwelt righteousness and which dwelt peace. For example, look at Ethiopia today. And compare how long has it's almost 40 years. Ethiopia will almost be going through 40 years of of apostasy against Haile Selassie. And is Ethiopia better? Are Ethiopians happy? In fact, their whole society foundation, the society, is credited, whether they want to admit it or not, to His Imperial Majesty and to the efforts of that faithful generation who recognized and honored the King of Kings and his Christ. So his majesty is the stone. Now there's a prophetic that we have in, um, in the book of uh, Daniel, and we might bring this to you in another, in another video update in the book of Daniel, because the book of Daniel speaks about a stone, and that's, that, that there's a connection there's a connection there as well. The book of Daniel speaks of a stone. Let's see if we can bring this up and search for it right here on our on our desk on our desk, desktop. It talks about a stone as well, and it also speaks of um, it also speaks of uh, the kingdom, the kingdom of God. How the kingdom of God would manifest, as it were, secretly into the world, into the world system, and that there would be opposition to that particular kingdom. But in the ultimate, in the ultimate of, 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 in, of, in the ultimate manifestation, that, the, that kingdom would be like a stone, and the stone would grow, and how this stone would fill the entire earth. And that's the revelation of Rastafari. He has obtained children of, of every nation, of every region, true and righteous children who call themselves and who know of themselves as Rastafari, as his spiritual children. Even among many nations were the leading architects of the creeping coup against him. That's what the coup was called. It was called the creeping coup. Okay, here we can bring this in. This is part of the prophecy that we have in Donnell's gospel right here, where there's a stone that's not cut, that's cut out with, without hands. That's not cut by human hands. That's cut out without man's hands or human hands. And prophecy says that this particular stone, which we see as a stone that fills the whole earth, is Christ's kingdom. Christ's kingdom or Christ in his kingly character's kingdom. And when we study that prophecy and connect it with Ethiopia, we find significant resonance and agreement between what has happened historically and what will happen prophetically, what, what has happened already as a part of history, a world story, and there's a good video out there. Get it if you can. It's called uh, "Man of the um, Millennium." Man of Millen Man of the Millennium. It's a very, very, it's a very, very good, um, a, a very, very good work. So check that out. So we're gonna bring bring some more of this to you as we get some of those. Uh, some of those, um, some of that art, in fact, together so we can demonstrate the continual portion of this. But it's in... Okay, let's bring this up right here. Okay, you see this right here? This is Dan... 
This is Daniel. This is this is part of Daniel. All right, this is part of Daniel's prophecy right here. This is part of Daniel's this is part of Daniel's prophecy right here. Um and maybe we'll do a part two to this. As you can see in Daniel's prophecy, let's uh raise it up so you can see it a little better. Remember there was that statue, head of gold, which is Babylon, um, the shoulder and arms part of silver Medo Persia, the waist or the loin part of uh, Greece, um um Oh, the brass, the Greece, the Greeks. You notice that there's Babylon at the top, Medo-Persia. Now notice that all of this is after Egypt. E Egypt was taken out of the equation by the Almighty God, punished for, for what it allowed to happen, how it allowed much of this technology to get out and get into the wrong hands, and about the Tamahu, the creation of the Tamahu as well. But the Almighty has a special love for Egypt, but he humbled Egypt. But when we talk about this beast of Daniel, it does not include Egypt because from Egypt we get the original manifestation of Christianity or pre-Christianity in the world. This is why there's such a link between Egypt and true Christianity. But when we talk about this beast, the beast begins with Babylon, head of gold, with the shoulder part and the arms, Medo-Persia, which is silver, brass, which is the loin part, grease. Then we have iron right down here. We have iron. And iron is Rome, where we have Rome right here. Then we have a divided kingdom, which is the iron and the clay, the divided kingdom. And this is the part that we're in right now, because this... Um, Anglo-European America and, 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 and Britain, UK, including, um, you know, the, the empires of the, the empires of, what do they call that video? The empires of the world? It's like the, the ring, the ring, that documentary about the empires of the city. The, em the ring of, the ring of, yeah, the ring, the ring of, the ring of power as well. Um, it goes into some background, even though they whitewash it a lot and often, but still the content part, if you do your own backup research and also research with some of the, through some of the black scholars out there who give a more honest racial, racial identification, they try to tell us that race is not significant. Race is that seed, brothers and sisters. When it says that Christ would be born of the seed of David, he can also say that Christ would be born of the race of David. And it's very clear the race of David, the real, authentic Jewish or Judaic people, were Ethiopic or Ethiopian black people. I mean, that's just straight up. Yes, there's converts of other nations and the, the Latter-day Jews, so forth and so on. But the root people that we're speaking about, are an Ethiopic or Ethiopian Hebrew stock of people. So we're right here, when we look at the prophetically, we're at this divided kingdom, the divided kingdom, which is, which is iron. Notice what's of iron and clay, iron and clay. And we wasn't going to mention this before, but let's bring this up right here. You see what this is, alienation. Not alienation, but alienation. I guess maybe it's more or less the same thing, right? Alienation. You understand? On alienation. What's the difference? You are alienating me. You understand? I feel alienated. I feel like I'm of an alienation. Here from Daniel chapter 2, verse 43, and this is a significant area of uh, scriptures which connects with the stone. This is building up on that verse from Psalm 118, verse 22. And building up on the foundational theme of Psalm 118, verse 22, we have to research in the scriptures the use of stone in connection prophetically. And here we have in Daniel chapter 2, verse 43, it says that they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Now, we got this from a particular website out there. Um, it's got the sisters or the, or the female's name, uh, a popular name, but the name eludes I right now. And you can see it has the gray, the alien head over the White House right here. And then it says, they shall mingle themselves the seed of men. 
which is kind of interesting. Who is this they? And who is the seed of men, the seed of human beings, seed of humanity? Are these aliens who would mingle themselves? So when it says here in, in the statue of, um, in the statue of, uh, of uh, Babylon or the statue of Nebuchadnezzar's uh, vision or dream, so from so it says here that the stone is cut without man's hands. And this is judgment. This is judgment. This is what his majesty has brought, you understand, has brought forward is a time of judgment. When his imperial majesty was crowned king of kings, that was the true dawning of the real Hadith Zemin. The real Hadith Zemin began then. The, I, this is why there was a newspaper in Ethiopia called Hadith Zemin. This is what it means when the Jehovah Witness and others will say that Christ came secretly into the world in 1914, and some say 1916, but most laugh it off because they said, well, according to our misunderstanding of Scripture, this is how it's going to happen. They could not recognize, and even the Jehovah Witness, you understand, also in a sense apostated themselves from that original vision because of the racial dynamic of it. They recognize that if they admitted fully where their prophecy and interpreting the prophecy led them to Ethiopia, to Haile Selassie, they would have been going against their, their white supremacist Freemasonic clique. And this is why in that whole movement there was a lot of problems. And uh, even in the Promise Key, this is why Judge uh, Rutherford and, and Russell and so forth and so on were denounced how they were denounced because they had, they had rightly recognized the time that they were living in by biblical prophecy. But when, when the trail led to Haile Selassie and Ethiopia and black people because of their own racist, racial bent, they apostated, they re rejected or refused the stone. But when you go back to the scriptural prophecy about the stone, there's something very, very interesting that we find here concerning the stone and this judgment. Because afterward, it says this stone, it, it breaks the, 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 it crashes on the feet of the statue, and the statue falls and breaks into pieces. And then it says that the stone fills the whole earth. And now this is connected correctly, according to biblical hermeneutics, with Christ's kingdom. With Christ's kingdom. But that stone which the builders refuse, which is the stone of the king of kings, excuse me, and his Christ becomes the head, the head of the corner. It, it becomes the head of the corner. So let's go to Daniel quickly right here. Let's go to Daniel, Daniel chapter 2. Daniel, how much, how's our time doing? Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. And Daniel chapter two, uh, this is this is where the dream, this is where um, Daniel made interpretation of this particular dream, because he had that wisdom. You understand where he breaks down here the the this image is, this image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass. Here in verse 33, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. And then it says in verse 34, and notice, you notice that the masons, the free, the free masons who are free of ma'at, truth, justice, and righteousness because of their satanistic inclination, that their orders only go up to 30, 33, and maybe 34. Mm -hmm. And, of course, if you follow it from what's his name's way, some people, are, we forget their names, but I have to at least refer to them so you know we're talking about Albert Pikey. He wrote additional degrees for them. You understand? And that is so-called free European Eurocentric masonry. His majesty is, is, is not party to that, not part of that. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, it says right here, which smote the image. Remember the image that we showed you right here? Let's just bring that up to refresh your memory. 
this is the particular image, and this is the particular part of Scripture that is talking about. All right, let us continue. It says, Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them in break them to pieces. So something happened here. It says Ijim Sai Nakao Dingai Katarawa Te Fanikalo Ka Beretina Ka Shekla Yahonawina Ye Miss Loon Igroch Si Metana Si Fetch Aye. So at the thirty fourth degree something happened something happened, their image, their illusion and delusion gets crashed. This is clearly what it's saying, and this is all connected with the stone, right, with the stone. Now, here at the 35th degree, or the 35th, which we can interpret as a degree, let's say an extra degree, notice, like we said, the so-called free Euro Anglo-European Masonic Order's degree, which is a latter-day thing. Like latter-day Jesus Christ is blonde hair, blue-eyed, but the original is black, is woolly-haired, and is Ethiopian black. Same thing with Mason versus or Freemason versus Mason. Freemasonry is a Anglo-European, Indo-European so-called institution, latter-day institution, while the origination is Ethiopian, Ethiopic, is Egyptian, is, is from the very root, is from the kingdom of God. Now, verse 35 says, Iyazian gizem beretuna shaklau nasuna beru warukum beandnet tefetche. That's the key right there, this word right here, and we'll get to the Targum momentarily. It says, beandnet tefetche. It says then it says then was the iron, the clay the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together. See, they were broken to pieces. They were smashed into little pieces together. This is what we're witnessing right now with the whole EU economy, American economy, the whole economic system, wars and rumors of wars, revolutions, um, natural so-called catastrophe, earth crisis, this earth crisis, because the earth and inhabitants don't know who Christ in his kingly character is. It says, the Mekarim Gizeh, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. And it says, and the wind carried them away. You know, we're in a time period of strong winds. We, we, I won't say prophesy, but we have predicted based on prophecy that there will be winds coming up after the Montserrat incident years ago in one of our older um, pamphlets. We said that, that um, there will be winds above 100 miles per hour, which will almost become like usual occurrences. And we've got a couple of fourth tastings of it recently here in the northeastern area and other parts, and you can see what devastation. We don't need to tell you about waters and the rains and flooding, do we? So it says that the winds now will carry them, scatter them, that no place was found for them. In other words, this folly, this foolishness that we're living right now, this foolish system we're living is going to be dealt with such, because this is the prophecy concerning such. But what about the stone? And the stone that smote the image, notice what it smote, the, the stone smote the image. The image of what? The image of the beast. You see, because most people have it, have it hard recognizing that Christ was a black man. 
because they're all worshiping the image of the beast. And the stone that smote the image, it says, became what kind of a mountain? A great mountain. And filled where? What did, what did it fill? And it filled the whole earth. This is the true, this is the true new world order. And this is what Donnell says. Hilmu yihino ahunema fituin bed ngusu feet in the nagralen. This is the dream. And we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Now, within the time that we have in this, in this portion, in this teaching right here, let's go through the Inglesenia and, and note where necessary, Bamarinya. It says, Thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Verse 38, And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of, hev of the heaven, hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. So Nebuchadnezzar is being told that this particular prophecy and vision is not concerning Nimrod or Namrud. It's not talking about that Ethiopian black man, that first builder, that Bana. It's not speaking about him. You see a lot of these false, these, these, these false preachers and prophets, they always go back to Nimrod, but this is saying right here, this is concerning the time of the Nebuchadnezzar or Nebuchadnezzar. You know what Gizeh, his time. So it says, and, and thou art this head of gold. So speaking that you're starting out this system right here, this system where, according to the Jehovah Witness uh, missile, this will be Nebuchadnezzar. This will be that Babylon. Because see, the other ba Bible they talk about, no nothing in the scriptures, we don't have anything in the scriptures which points out the lies that they tell us. This is speaking about the Babylon from Nebuchadnezzar's time. It doesn't say, well, this is part of something that happened before. It doesn't mention Egypt in this judgment, too. I want you to note this as well. Egypt was already judged. Because, see, it's not like Ethiopia in a sense. Sometimes our people are astray, and, and the Almighty showing great mercy. He, he judges us first, and even judges us harsh, just like us as the lost sheep, the black sheep of Israel, the so-called African-American, African in the West. We've been already, we went through our time. Hopefully, we will learn from what we went through. And the same is true with Egypt. So Egypt is not mentioned anywhere in that particular um, Judgment, but you hear a lot of these false pastors and preachers are always hopping on Egypt. You understand? While wow. it's very clear what these kingdoms are according to Donnell's prophecy. That's why in the word it says that to the devil and the Satanists and the rest of the, the Antichrist, it says, um, and you thought you was wiser than Daniel. They thought they was wiser than Daniel. Try to take his word to make it mean something that it doesn't mean. But verse 39 from the time that we have, and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. So it's saying that after the time of Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, another kingdom, not another king, but a whole other system will rise, and that will be inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. You see the, king, the, the key right here? Shall bear rule over all the earth. So let's look at these from this missile right here. We have Medo-Persia, and then we have Greece. Greece right here, which is at the line section and is represented by the metal of brass, will bear rule over all the earth. So we can study this and see the real historical manifestation of these things within true interpretation of history. Kut al Arba, verse 40, and the fourth, the Aratanyawan Mengist, shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. So, so who, who's that again? This iron part right here, this iron part right here is Rome. Is Rome, is the kingdom of Rome. At this particular point right here is the kingdom of Rome. 
So we know about the rise of the Roman empires and the Keshars and the Tsars and the Caesars. Uh, it says, and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron. Now, what is iron? Iron is Rome. So what's the potter's clay? Hmm. The kingdom shall be divided. The kingdom shall be what? Divided. Wasn't the Roman Empire divided between the eastern Constantinople and Rome? And more attention was in Constantinople and the eastern part, which is modern-day Turkey, than in Rome. You remember how it was divided? You understand? And also part of that is that black presence, too. Let's understand that. But there shall be in it of the strength of iron. But the strength of it is the Roman part, the strength of iron or of the Roman system of things. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, that the iron was mixed with clay. Now, if you ever try to mix iron and, and clay, you, you basically know it, it's not very, there's not a strong bond. It's, it's not, scientifically speaking, it's not a strong, it's a weak bond. Verse 42 says, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Mm-hmm. And this is exactly how the Roman Empire became. And now this is, this is a visual. Let's look at this visual right here. Now, what we did over here with this one is kind of further annotate it, bring it down to divided kingdom to show where we're at right now. Now, the Roman Empire, let's now understand where it goes from, from there prophetically. This is where we have to now make sense out of prophecy and the history, as his Matthew says, God and history shall judge. In other words, God and his story and his story shall judge. So it says right here, and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And on a certain level, we see a racial dynamic to this, the iron and the clay, the black or the white, the Eurocentric, the Roman, and the indigenous people. And you see a lot of that presence, even from some of the oldest art. You see the black presence in Byzantine. That's what they call it. Later on, they call it Byzantine, the Byzantine Empire. This is where the whitewashing took place, too, where they whitewashed many of the original images of the virgin mother and child and Christ. And this is similar to the, how the original images, you understand, from the earliest days of Christianity, where we have our Savior right here, where we have our Savior right here, you understand? And our black Lord and Savior and our black mother or the true mother, Kedistin Gilmarium, and the sun. Notice how the sun is pointing to that star. The sun is pointing to that star right there. And this gives you a full shot of this particular picture. And it's, it's wonderful that this one has been preserved with its original colors, where you can see the original Ethiopic colors or the original black presence but let us return to so that's the clay part because what color is natural clay what color is natural clay you understand it's a reddish it's like in another video we did where we demonstrated the the, the reddish the adama or the red earth verse 44 it says and in the days of these kings now here's what's so very interesting in the days of which kings these kings but it doesn't really specify which kings which kings are we speaking about it says the days of these kings Benaziyama, Negestata, Zemin, Yesamaya, Amlaka, Lezalalem, Yamai, Faris, Mengista, Yasa, Nesal, Lelela, Hizbim, Yamai, Set, Mengista, Yehonal, Ineziyanema, Mengistato, Hulu, Te Fechachewalech, Tat Efacho, Malech, Lezalalemema, Tikomalech. Ethiopia in Degena to Kormalech. And in the days of these kings shall the who? The God of heaven. Now, take some notes of this, and 
hopefully you'll find out more and we'll have opportunity to teach on it as well. But the God of heaven, it mentions throughout the scripture, even in Revelation, very interesting, it speaks about the God of heaven and the God of earth. It seems to go in one chapter from the God of heaven, the God of, or the God of earth, the God of earth, and all of a sudden the God of heaven. And then we, and this is where Christ comes into the picture within Revelation when it mentions the God of heaven. So there's a God of earth is mentioning, then it changes the focus of this God after the, we could say, the ascension, you understand, um, to the God of heaven. He shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. The kingdom of the king of kings, of Kedemar, we Hala Selassie, has not been destroyed, as many people think so. It's been dismantled. You understand? It's gone to, as we can say, the antimatter. It's a spiritual dimension. You understand? As we can see within the Rastafari ministry and the number of brothers and sisters who are being called out from the world into the light of the truth. But the kingdom of the king of kings, it was not, he was not conquered by anyone, not, no king. He stepped down. And regardless if Ethiopians don't want to admit it, careless ones, they have a judgment waiting for them. And uh, you can go to uh, Zephaniah 2 and 12 to see that particular judgment for the careless. But it goes on to say that, and the kingdom shall not be what? Left, right here. And the kingdom shall not be left, it says, shall not be left to other people. The kingdom of the king of kings has not left the realm of Ethiopian Hebrews, of, of black people. It has not. The white people didn't take over or nothing like that, no Asian so-called people. No. Is it still an Ethiopian Hebrew reality waiting for the right people to be sent? And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but, notice what it says here, but it shall do what? Break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. This is where we're at right now with the spiritual part of it. You understand the spiritual part of the prophecy, the ministering, the preaching of the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. And it shall do what? It shall stand forever, forever. It's still a forever reality. No matter all the lies and slander, the truth of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, of Kedemawi, Haile Selassie I, of the elect of God, the King of Kings of Ethiopia, stands firm forever. The only thing they did was prove this prophetic word by their rejection of that righteous man. Now, the last uh, couple of verses here, do we have time to get into that? The last verse 45, let's get to, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the what? Great God, not just God, the great God hath made known to the king through the mouth of Donel, and Donel means the judgment of El, or the judgment, Don the Hail, the judgment of the power, even the judgment of the first power of the Trinity, hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation is sure. Or is yetamen rastamen? Is it is a sure interpretation. Now here in verse 46 it says, "Then the king Nebuchadnezzar he fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors to him, that they should sparkle some ancients, mm -hmm. some kind of balsam to Daniel." And the king, the king answered to Daniel and said, of a truth, it is, it is what it is, of a truth, that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. None other could reveal, none other of this court could reveal this secret. So it's important what the Negus, the king, Nebuchadnezzar says, Negusum Danelin, Yehina Mishtir, this mystery to Galit Zen, Techa Lohalina, Baunetam Lakachu, Yamalik Tamlak, Yenigistima Gieta, Mishtirim, 
Gelachno below Tanagaro. Verse uh, 48. Then the king made Donnell a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Donnell requested of the king, and he sent Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Donnell sat in the gate of the king. So this is just an expansion on the basic stone prophecy and the stone premise as well as a connection with what this stone really signifies and who is this stone that the king of kings, Haile Selassie I, he is that stone which the builders have rejected and these builders, as we have specified in this time of revelation, are the so-called uh, Anglo-European uh, free masonry. They are these modern so-called builders. But His Majesty represents the great architect, the grand architect, the true builder of truth, justice, and righteousness. More to come, my brothers and sisters. Yah willing, shalom.